Welcome, this is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions, and today I'm gonna to take Tactica's multifamily value add model and add a commercial analysis component to it. Just a quick disclaimer, all templates Tactica offers website visitors are intended for pure multifamily analysis. I understand there may be an instance where you come across a project that has some ground level retail. The video today will give you an idea of how you can account for it by creating a commercial pro forma cash flow. However, if you are consistently underwriting mixed use, Tactica tools may not be the best fit. A tool that caters to mixed use will likely offer enhanced features better equipped to handle commercial assumptions. I recently published a blog post that details two other methods to account for commercial income that don't involve any alterations of any kind. It's linked below, and I suggest you check that out first if you're in need of a simpler solution. If you've been enjoying Tactica's tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to our channel, and allow us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Let's lay out the scenario. We're underwriting an 85 unit multifamily building that has two ground level commercial spaces, specifically retail. Space number one is a triple net lease. It's 1500 square feet and it currently rents for $28 per square foot, but it expires in six months. As far as we know, there has not been any renewal discussions with the current tenants. If we were to purchase this property, we should expect that it's going to be up to us to take on some vacancy in the short term and find a new retail tenant. Space two is a little more straightforward. It's also a triple net lease. It's 1,750 square feet, currently rents for $27 per square foot, and the 10-year lease is freshly signed. If we're looking at a 10-year investment hold, we should have a tenant in space two for the duration of our investment timeline. What I intend to do is build a retail cash flow model that first and foremost will account for that vacancy that's going to take place in space number one. I also want the model to factor in releasing costs. We would need to pay some tenant improvements and also a leasing broker, a commission to help us find that new tenant. These are triple net leases as well. So we wanna calculate CAM, property tax, insurance, and utility reimbursements that we would get from the tenants occupying these spaces kind of going hand in hand with that in space one where we're gonna be taking on some vacancy, we wanna see how that vacancy affects the reimbursements of those expenses during the time frame we're looking for a new tenant. And finally, we're gonna take this retail analysis, we're gonna tie it into the multifamily pro forma, and we're gonna have a way to analyze a mixed use investment opportunity. We're looking at the investment summary tab of Tactica's multifamily value add model. To the right of that, I created a fresh tab, it's called commercial, this is where we're gonna build our retail cash flow analysis. As a reminder, this is not included in the baseline model. This is really just for that rare instance that you're, you know, you're, you're usually looking at pure multifamily, 100% residential investments, but you have that particular deal that has some ground level commercial. This is how you could potentially go about it. We go to the commercial tab, it's blank. The first thing I wanna do is just create a little summary of our retail units, specifically what the square footage and potential leasing costs. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create uh, a black header. We wanna track the square footage, the allocation of each unit and the total retail square footage, and then the leasing costs. We have space one, space two, then I'll create a total calculation as well. So if you recall, space one, 1500 square feet, space two, 1750, and then we'll total that so there's 3,250 total retail square footage in this building. Space one constitutes 46% of that total retail square footage. Well, space two is 54%. And then leasing costs. As if you recall, we don't have a lot of time with space one. We're gonna take over this property, we'll get six months of rent, and then the lease expires, and the current tenant is likely not going to renew. So we're gonna need to go find a new tenant, we're likely gonna to have to allocate some sort of tenant improvement balance, pay a commercial broker some type of leasing commission. So this is where you would file those types of costs. Let's assume that it costs, it's gonna cost $90,000 to retenant space number one. And then space number two, it's a freshly signed 10 year lease. So that's taken care of, we'll total that. Then we need to factor in this $90,000 expense in the total project sources and uses. So to do that, let's go back to the investment summary tab. 
If we scroll down to the bottom left corner of the dashboard, we have a sources and uses section. You can see it summarizes things like the purchase price, the renovation capital, closing costs, loan costs. And then there's two manual inputs that we can make, other capital and other costs. I wanna factor in that minus $90,000 in the other cost section. So I'm gonna come back to the commercial tab, grab that, hit enter, and now it's in there. So what are we saying? We're saying that it's gonna cost $90,000 to re-tenant space number one, and that's gonna be funded with investor equity. Now we can begin forecasting our retail cash flows. The first thing I wanna do is just create some headers for 11 years. Let's start with rents. So we have the rent of space one and the rent of space two. Currently at space one, the rent is $28. Again, we only have six months of that and it's gonna expire. So let's say we've talked to a market expert, a local leasing broker, and they think once we release this, this space, we're gonna be able to get $30 per square foot. So we'll put in $30 per square foot in year two, and then we're gonna increase that. We're gonna say that in this particular market, 3% um, is kind of the standard for your annual escalator and I'll drag that through to year 11. The current rent is $27. Again, it's a freshly signed lease, and this space is also gonna see 3% annual escalators. That's what's stipulated in the lease. And then I will drag that over as well. And now we can make some occupancy assumptions. Space one, we take over the keys of the property. We're gonna get six months of income from space one, and then it's gonna be vacant for the next six months, likely. I'm gonna do a 50% occupancy in year one. And to be conservative, I'm gonna assume that it takes an additional six months into year two to finally get a tenant in there that's paying rent. So we'll run a 50% occupancy in year two, and then by year three, it will be fully stabilized, and I will use a 90% occupancy, and then drag that all the way through the end of the through, through to the end of the pro forma. Why am I doing 90%? It's just a way to be a little bit more conservative. The reality is a lender looking at this deal, they're gonna run some kind of vacancy buffer on this retail income as well to kind of stress the numbers and make sure there's enough, enough income to cover the debt service. In this particular market, 10% feels like a good rule of thumb for just a general vacancy assumption. I'm gonna do the same 90% for this new 10 year lease that was just signed. And actually in year 11, I'm gonna back this off to 50%. Why am I doing that? This is a 10 year lease. So if we look forward 10 years from now, the current tenant is gonna be up for renewal. So it might create some uncertainty for the next potential buyer or even ourselves if we continue to hold it. And we just wanna stress the NOI in that last year of the pro forma. If we stress it, it's gonna have an impact on that residual sale value if we're running a 50% occupancy versus a 90%, but it's just a, it's a conservative way to do it. It's not gonna have like a hugely material impact on, on your return thresholds, um, but it, it is just good to think about kind of that liability then for the next potential buyer if you have a lease that's coming due around year 10, year 11 of your investment hold. Now that we have our rents inputted and, and occupancy assumptions into the pro forma, we can calculate the total annual income for both spaces one and two. So to do that, we're gonna take the square footage of space one and I will lock the column. And we'll multiply it by the rent per square foot times the occupancy. And then I can drag that all the way through and then I'll drag it down to get the annual rent for commercial space too. I'm gonna to make these a light gray because these will eventually flow into our overall pro forma. The next thing I wanna do is factor in the reimbursable expenses. If you read the blog post, we figured out what we could potentially bill back our retail tenants you know, for their portion of property taxes, repairs, utilities, insurance, those types of items. There's a few different places you can get this information. Um, you can obviously look at the historical financials. That will provide you some good clues. My personal favorite is the CAM reconciliation schedule. An organized owner is gonna have an Excel spreadsheet that shows what they're able to bill back for, how their allocations work, what they've been getting back, um, if they've had to do any true ups throughout the year. That's a great report to figure out what's been happening at the project historically and how things are allocated. And obviously the commercial lease too. Sometimes you can look at the lease and it just specifies maybe on a per square foot basis 
what the landlord can bill back each year for these types of reimbursable expenses. So check out that blog post. I, I give some examples of, of the things we're looking at, but we figured out that we would be able to bill back in year one about $31,000. Now that we're doing a cash flow, we need to come up with an annual escalator. So I'm gonna do three and a half percent and we can just take our 30,752 times one plus 3.5%, lock that cell, close the parentheses, get rid of the decimal places here, drag over. And so these reimbursable expenses are increasing from about 31,000 to 43,000 by the end of our investment horizon. We wanna apply the occupancy rates that we plugged in earlier to this reimbursable expense. So to do our first calculation, we're gonna take the percentage of total square footage. This is each retailer's responsibility for these total operating expenses. And we will lock the column and then we're gonna multiply it by the reimbursable amount and we'll lock the row and then we'll multiply that by the occupancy. And then I'll drag that all the way through and then drag that down. And then we can create, we can do a, a little sum calculation. And then I'll use the format painter for the total bill back because this row will also flow into our overall pro forma. I wanna do just a simple calculation of what percentage of these total reimbursable expenses we'd be getting back each year. So in year one, when there's vacancy in the pro forma in space number one, we'd be getting back 72%. In year two, we'd be getting 72% back. Then we'd be getting 90 for the duration of the pro forma. In year 11, 68% back that year. The last step is to simply integrate what we created on this tab into the overall pro forma. So I'm gonna to go to the financials tab and you can see that we have a couple lines dedicated to other. First, I'm gonna take everything in row 25, I'm gonna highlight and then just drag all those formulas down. So then I'm gonna go back into the commercial tab and our labels, we wanna track Income in space one, income in space two. If there was historical information, you could enter that here. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna delete that out for now just to keep it cleaner. And then we also want to grab the total bill back. The paste is value, control alt V. And then in year one of the pro forma, right? I'm not doing any historical information. You're likely gonna have it. I'm just trying to save time. I'm I really just wanna focus on the pro forma alterations you'd be making. But for, we're gonna hit equals for total income, commercial space one, and we'll grab the 21,000. For space two, we'll come to commercial, grab the 42,000, 525, and then total bill back. Commercial, we'll grab the 22,000. For space one, in year two, we're getting 22,500. For space two in year two, we'd be getting 43,801. And for operating reimbursements in year two, we'd be getting 22,769. And then we would drag all of that over through year 11. And now we're pulling directly from the commercial tab. So over here, so we don't cause any confusion, I'm gonna delete out any of these assumptions. They're not controlling anything if there are assumptions in there. And then I'm just gonna take the formatting from the property tax section and implement that for these last revenue rows. Now remember, I have a key down here. So this kind of beige brown color, those are assumptions you're making above. If they're gray, those are assumptions you've made elsewhere and are summarized above. So like property taxes, you don't make any property tax assumptions on this page. You make them on the real estate tax tab. The same thing's happening in commercial. We're making all of our assumptions on this tab in our brown tax cells, and they're then flowing into the financials tab. Just to assure there's no confusion, it might make sense to even copy and paste a little note that just says assumptions for commercial 
are summarized on the commercial analysis tab. If you're using this model, you remember not to type in anything here. It's not going to do anything. All of our retail cash flows are nicely summarized within the framework of the overall pro forma analysis model. This will all flow through to the return summary. So now all of these IRRs, the equity multiples, cash on cash returns, et cetera, it's all gonna factor in this retail income and our objective is complete. That concludes the video. We took Tactica's multifamily value add model and created a relatively simple retail cash flow and then tied it into the overall pro forma. Just a reminder, all of Tactica's templates are for pure residential, so 100% multifamily analysis. However, I understand there may be an instance here and there where you come across a project that has some ground level retail and I wanted to give you an idea of how you could go about underwriting it. This was a workaround we did today, but I, I understand that it may come up short and certain areas, especially if you have projects that are very heavy commercial. Remember, I published a blog post that details two simpler methods than what I showed you today that don't involve any actual pro forma alterations. It's linked below. I check that out as well. Uh, there's also some other ancillary information that you might find helpful when you're underwriting retail. If you've been enjoying Tactica's tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Thank you so much for your attention, and we'll see you next time. Take care.